Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Jia Bo Huang from Columbia Computer Vision, Computer Vision Groups and supervised by Professor Sean Kong. And I'm really glad to be here to introduce our work on supervised deep learning by neighborhood discovery, which was published at ICML 19. The problem we started about was unsupervised deep learning. It is well known that the deep learning technique has achieved unprecedented breakthroughs in lots of computer vision fields. However, its success is still heavily relying on massive amount of human annotation, which usually label intensive to be collected and dramatically limits its usability in real world scenarios. So, an interesting question to, be, to think about is, is it possible for the deep learning model to learn as how we human do, which is acquiring the knowledge for massive amount of human data without any manual labels? Exist, existing study in this field mainly fall into four categories. The first category is the clustering analyze. This type of method jointly optimized the long-standing clustering task and learned the representation by estimating the assignment of each training sample to the ground truth ground tru categories and then train the CN model in a supervised manner accordingly. Well, the second category is the sample specificity learning, which is also known as the instance learning. This type of method takes each sample as an independent class and train the CN to learn the unique information encoded in them. And with the assumption that samples from the same uh, semantic classes should share more information from those from different classes. Well, another rising branch is called the self-supervised learning methods. This type of, of approaches exploit the intrinsic information encoded in training data according to some kind of well-designed and usually domain-dependent pretext task. For example, they train the CN to learn the mapping between different color channels in images, or, learn, or train the CN to predict the image rotation so that the model is able to capture some low-level or mid-level features in, in the video or images. And the last category is called the data synthesized based approach. This type of method learns to reconstruct the input data as faithful as possible in order to learn the true data distribution and then take the intermediate feature as the representation. So among all of these approaches, the clustering analyze holds the best chance to approach to the performance of supervised learning as they explicitly model the class boundaries. However, they this type of matter turned to be error propagation as it is hard for them to, uh, to estimate the correct intersample relation in consistent to the ground truth membership without the help of ground truth labels. Well, at the other extreme, the sample specificity learning holds no assumption on intersample relation but treat each sample as an independent class. This type of matter can avoid the problem of error propagation to a large extent. However, they suffer from another problem of poor discriminative ability as they take no concern of correlation between samples when learning the representation. So a straightforward and also simple question, uh, idea is can we improve the quality of, uh, of deep learning model by measuring the consistency of the hypothetic in intersample relation and then change the CN model according to those in high confidence only. So to that end, we propose a matter called the anchor neighborhood discovery. The idea is quite straightforward. We mine the neighborhoods for each samples and then estimate their consistency to the ground truth membership then train the CN model according to those in high confidence only and the whole training process is divided into several rounds so that we are able to take the advantage of as much neighborhood information as possible in, uh, along with the improvement of feature qualities. So as I just mentioned, the neighborhoods uh, we utilize to learn the representation is mounted according to the distance between features. So it is undeniable that some of the neighborhoods should be consistent to the ground truth membership while the others are not. So the key challenge in our approach is how to estimate the consistency of neighborhoods without the help of ground truth labels. Here, we made the assumption that samples from the same uh, samples from the sparse area in the feature space should be more likely to come from the same classes as their neighbors when being compared to those from the dense areas. 
and by computing the entropy of sample similarities to the whole data sets, we are able to determine whether they are from a sparse area or dense one. So in this case, the entropy of sample similarity distribution can be adopted as the metric of their corresponding neighborhood consistency to the ground truth membership. And we verify our assumption on four widely adopted object recognition data sets by plotting the, neighborhoods, the relation between neighborhood consistency and the entropy of their corresponding sam anchor sample similarity distribution. And it turns out that the, the lower the entropy is, the higher the consistency will be, which verified our assumptions. So based on our assumption, after mounting the neighborhoods of each samples according to their distance between all the other samples, we estimate their, we compute their, uh, the entropy of their similarity distribution and take it to select those in highest um, estimated consistency for representation learning. With the confident neighborhood information, we chain the CN model to maximize the probability that each anchor samples are from the same classes as their neighbors. As for those samples from the inconsistent neighborhoods, the model will be chained to push away their feature from all the others so that the unique information in them can be recognized. And lastly, we chained our model in a curriculum learning-like manner which is divide the whole training process into several rounds because it is natural that the amount of consistent neighborhoods should be limited when the model has not been well trained and along with the improvement of features quality it will gradually increase so we divide the whole training process into several rounds and increase the proportion of selected neighborhoods in each round in order to take the advantage of as much neighborhoods information to learn the to change the CM model along with the improvement of features quality. So it, in the experiments part, we firstly evaluated our models on three widely adopted small-scale image classification data sets by both linear and nonlinear classifier. And it turns out that our model is able to get up to 12.5% margin over, the, over other state-of-the-art approaches. And then we move on to the large-scale image classification task. However, this time, the advantage of our models is much weaker, and we blame this to the fact that uh, the amount of intersample relation we utilize to change the CN model is actually limited. And uh, because we always want to keep all of them in high consistency, however, uh, it actually draws back our model's discriminative ability. And lastly, we further tested our models on a much more challenging task, which is the fine grained image classification. And our model's advantage is also clear over the best competitors. And here we showed a few cases to indicate how our model's attention evolved across different training rounds. And it is obvious that the initialized model will sometimes lost its focus to the background and along with we introducing the consistent intersample relation to learn the representation, the model can gradually shift its attention from the background, from the background to the foreground, which also verified our model's effectiveness. So this is a brief introduction of our works on supervised deep learning by neighborhood discovery. Thank you very much.